Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus podcast, where we share and connect as we spotlight our favorite shows and movies. I'm Diana, and today we are talking about The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. Yay! (laughs) Renee is back to join me. Hi, Renee. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I've been anticipating our conversation. Me too. I'm so excited to talk with you about it. But I want to remind our friends out there listening more about your background. So I would love it if you could share about your writing and your other podcasts, because I would love for them to know. Oh, thank you. Um, Yeah, so I am the editor and writer for Undead Walking. And um, I have, there's two other contributors that uh, they usually do an article or two a month. So it's, you know, kind of nice to have some extra help. (laughs) But yeah, so we can find us. um, We're a part of Fansided, which is kind of the umbrella group. And that, you know, it's the Undead Walking portal of that. And you can find us on our website, Facebook and Twitter. And if you, we do have a newsletter that comes out um, once a day. Yeah, it comes out once a day and it kind of just gives you the highlights of what is new from the site. And you can sign up from the Undead Walking um, website with that. You just go to, there's a more uh, tab, go under more, under about, and then the newsletter, just type in your email and you'll get those daily emails to remind you of our new articles. And it also is nice because it does pull from the other fan cited sites that write about The Walking Dead. So there are several other ones who they'll ta- you know hit on the topic of The Walking Dead. So you'll get to see all of those. So it's, yeah, it's pretty good. And I'm also the co-host of Beauty and the Beasts uh, podcast. And we've been uh, together um, in different, there's four of us now and it's gotten kind of different times, like seven years now. And we're very informal. We are very, um, we do live chat. So we have our, our guests right in there asking questions as we break down the episodes. We do lots and lots of interviews with the actors and things. So that's always just such a highlight to have those guests come on, especially the repeat ones. You know, that's always fun to have the repeat yeah. ones because we've gotten kind of camaraderie with them and things. So yeah, that's all. That's me. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love that you're taking the time to be with, uh, with all of us mm-hmm. and, and share all of your knowledge and insight and everything. I don't know so if it's knowledge, you. but it's, th- there's something yes, there anyway. <laughs> it, is. it is. But okay. This is just a total side note because I'm, I'm looking at your background and I've noticed your Funko Pops in the background oh. previously, uh-huh. but I uh, went to Universal Studios. I don't know if I told you this. Oh. And then I was in Hollywood and I went to Funko World and we made our own oh, Funko. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> so... I, you know, they only have so many things to pick from, but uh, I'm holding a laptop and a phone. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that is so adorable. <laughs> yeah. And my little dog yeah. too. So, Oh, I love um, it. That's fantastic. Yeah. All, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so sorry. No, that's that. I had perfect. To share because I was looking at yours <laughs> yeah. and I thought I have to share mine. Love it. All right. Okay. Let's just jump into the question of the day because... This is all about Daryl Dixon, Mm -hmm. right? And so I thought, oh, the question of the day, it has to be about Daryl Dixon. I would love to know what you think Daryl Dixon's greatest strength and his greatest weakness are, because we've seen him for so many (laughs) years, living in this apocalyptic Mm -hmm. world. So what do you think that is? Well, I think besides his survivor skills, because we all know he has those, that is like obviously the great, probably the greatest thing, you know, he is a survivor on many different levels <laughs> and yeah. the apocalypse just kind of fine tune those things for him. But I think that one, I think his kind heart is a strength that he has, that he has grown into. He didn't know that he had that until, you know, later on into the, you know, walking dead. But I also feel that is a that's a weakness of his as well, because, yes. uh, you know, he will put his desire, his own desires or wants, needs, whatever aside to help others. And, you know, I think he does that because he was so neglected as a child, even into his early adulthood. So he does that to help people. But again, like I said, it's a weakness, which like in this case, he sets aside, he wants to go home. That's, he doesn't care about what's going on in France. He doesn't care about their political, all the stuff that's going on with these different things. <laughs> and he wants I to go home. Chills. So what does he do? He sees a little boy in need and Daryl has a soft spot when it comes to the children. You know, he's taking care of Judith. Yeah. He's taking care of RJ. He's taking, you know, yeah. different 
children throughout the time we've seen him. Yes. And he, so now again, he's setting aside his desires, his wants, his needs to help this boy, to help Isabel, to help, you know, <laughs> Sylvia. And so I just feel that that is his very great strength, but it also can be his weakness. Yes. Oh, I say it all the time. I agree with you, but that's because it's true. I do. <laughs> because I thought about this question also, and I, I agree that his survival skills, because we've seen Daryl infiltrate groups and easily do it. Like he can figure them out mm -hmm. and how he's going to work his way in there. And they just accept him. He can just do it. Mm -hmm. He's really good. He's actually the best out of any other person to be able to do that. Well, Carol's pretty good too, yeah. <laughs> but on, on a different, on a different way, she More is. More stealthy. But, um, and Daryl, yes. like Daryl reads yes. people well, I think, but she's a stealth yes. master. She can yes. just speak. She, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why they make a great exactly. pair. Ooh, which is, okay, I'm going to get off the subject, but <laughs> Carol was supposed to be in mm -hmm. this whole series and she's not. And I want to know, later okay. on <laughs> if what you think that impact would have been with mm -hmm. her on it and, and if we saw her missing mm -hmm. from what we saw okay so there's that but back to this question so I went and asked my husband also about what he thought mm -hmm. his uh, greatest strength or his greatest weakness I said well what do you think his greatest weakness is and he said helping people I said it is but isn't that a strength if you don't have that then you're going to be really cold and <laughs> and and callous person if you don't want to help people so it, it's funny because that was a little bit along the lines of what you said so I do see that as his strength and his mm -hmm. weakness but I also thought that Daryl doesn't see as far as weaknesses are concerned he doesn't see his own value mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a person because he goes off to be on his own so often because he doesn't know how to deal with people or groups at certain times mm -hmm. and so he just has to go off and I think that's because he doesn't know what he brings and doesn't believe in himself enough also you know we only seen him with uh, Leah at one mm -hmm. point I mean yeah, mm -hmm. there's been other little rumblings, but nothing mm -hmm. really concrete. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens in this uh, series. Mm -hmm. But I just think sometimes he just doesn't know yeah. Yeah, his true value. And I think that comes, um, yeah, from himself. his, you know, neglect isn't, uh, you know, he never had anyone to validate yes. anything in his life. You know, yes. he was never encouraged or supported or complimented probably, you know. And so when those things yes. happen, he doesn't know how to process that. And I've, you know, you've heard people say before, the bad things are easier to believe <laughs> for whatever reason, yeah. we just are more accepting of those. Okay. So friends out there, let us know what you think. What do you think Daryl's greatest strength and weaknesses are? You can reach us on Twitter or Instagram at Screens and Focus. All our social media links are on our website at screensandfocus.com. Also in our show notes, because we would love to hear from you because he has so many and we want you to share them with us. All right. So let's get to news. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you were sharing some news previous to me hitting the record, but <laughs> stop. I'm like, wait. Fear the Walking Dead is coming on October 22nd. So Daryl's final finale will air the next week we'll get fear so um i'm sure everyone's heard amc has changed everything with the early screening or the early viewing and things so amc plus now will release the day of but at 3 a.m eastern so you get a little bit of early time but not days ahead like before but they did release um what? they did release the first two uh episode titles and synopsis for Fear the Walking Dead. So the first one is Anton, which we know is what that's Strand's new name, because in the teasers, it's she's like, why are they calling you Anton? Oh. <laughs> and yeah, so if you watch the teasers, there's something going on with Strand with that. And the synopsis for A07, Anton is Strand fights to protect his new life when it is threatened by the arrival of an old friend. And the exciting news that I didn't share before was uh, Danae Garcia, who plays Luciana, is directing the first episode. Wow. So this will be her first. She's directed things in the past, but this is her first television uh, series that she's directed. So she makes the fifth cast member of Fear the Walking Dead to direct an episode or two or three, you know, whatever. So that's yeah. exciting. So that was my, yeah, it wasn't anything too crazy, but it was exciting because that's a, yeah, it's a monumental thing for the actor, you know. 
And then the second one is called Iron Tiger. And the search for gas leads to an unexpected reunion that Madison uses as an opportunity. So those are the, that's the only two they've released so far. We have screeners in our inbox and I have not watched them yet because I still haven't even, <laughs> I'm still doing my other stuff. So <laughs> I don't want to watch it too far ahead. Okay, Renee, thank you so much for that update on everything. I just love it. You always, always have the right information. So <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. So let's get into The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, season one, episode one. Okay, so I'm going to give a brief recap and then we'll dive into the episode. So Daryl Dixon wakes up, washed up on shore in France, and he encounters a mysterious landscape, a strain of new walkers, some bad guys, some good guys, including a nun named Isabel and a young boy named Laurent. So there's themes of survival and faith and desire for home. Those are all introduced, which we'll get into. So Renee, what did you think of this premiere? I thought it was outstanding. I I was one of those people who was very <laughs> unsure. <laughs> Daryl's always been my favorite if, since day one. I mean, he, you know, so I always root for him, but I was like, how are they going to make this good? How are they going to make this make any sense? So I was very, <laughs> you know, not very unsure going in, but and then, you know, started seeing the teasers trailers. I started getting more excited, but I just feel it was such a drastic change from the main series, which, you know, that's what we're doing. These spinoffs, we, you know, we don't want to do the same series over again, you know, and, but, but at the same time, Daryl's presence kept it familiar. So then we like, you know, that was good because he was still Daryl. He's still, you know, just Daryl, nothing changed. You know, the C didn't, you know, besides maybe getting a little bit cleaner, he, other than that, that, you know, that (laughs) he's still Daryl. And so I really, you know, loved watching how his, you know, regardless of whatever has happened, we don't really know the whole story going to that point. You know, we're going to learn it eventually, but his survival skills kicked right in. <laughs> and He just yeah. was Daryl, you know? And so I, I feel like, you know, you're watching this familiar character with this completely, you know, I think great Nicotero said he's a fish out of water and it's exactly I mean, literally, you know, out of the water, you know? So yeah, but I, I loved it. I really did. I loved it too. And I was feeling, cause it's like a bait, you know, your little baby, right? <laughs> you you want everybody else to like it too, right? You're like, oh, my baby, it looks so good. You must love my baby. Um, so that's how I was feeling because me too. I love, I love the whole original series. I love Daryl and it's like, ah, I want this to succeed so bad. And after watching Dead City, I thought, okay, well, that was really good, but that has different directors Mm -hmm. on it and and everybody else backing that. And I'm like, this is a new place. What's going to happen? So for me, I loved it. I wondered what others were going to think of it. I kept thinking, okay, they have to see what I'm seeing, right? Because again, you're right. You saw Daryl and that was very familiar, but it was this whole (laughs) new environment. And to me, that made it more exciting. And I will say I read a review where someone said, it was a critic's review, like, why would Daryl end up in France of all places? That's such a odd place for him to have been. Why didn't he go to, I think they said like Colorado or (laughs) or somewhere else, I don't know, named other states. And I thought, but wouldn't that be revisiting the same thing already? I I think going to another country just opens up so much, right? You get to see what the other side of the world is facing, Mm -hmm. how they are dealing with things. And and their landscape is so different. They have just different things that we're going to get into in a minute. But so I... I thought, okay, critic, you are wrong. <laughs> I think you are wrong. Um, uh, he even talked about how, I'm getting ahead of myself, but how there were so many women in the whole Walking Dead universe who have been the villains. Mm-hmm. And I thought, but for so long, it's always been men. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't the women need to catch yeah. up a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Also, it's half you know, half the population. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just women in different roles. So that didn't come to mind for me. I was 
thinking, okay, I was fine with it. So anyway, I really did love this first episode and I, there's so much that we're going to get into, but yeah, that was my feeling too on that. So, and I have to say the 90 minutes to me went by so fast. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, we're at, well, we're at 70 minutes. And I thought, what are they going to do for the next 10? (laughs) And then they did. Yep. And then they had 10 more minutes. So so I, uh, I was just so happy to see Daryl again. I was so, so excited. So, and I wasn't disappointed. Mm-hmm. So that is, that is my thought on the first episode. <laughs> so in talking about that landscape, mm-hmm. what I had thoughts, and I'm curious to know what your thoughts when you first saw him there, mm-hmm. did, did you have any thoughts about him being there? Or what did you think it added or didn't? It, it was just very strange, you know, to not see him in the woods or on his motorcycle. You know, I mean, it was like he was missing and his crossbow's gone. And we were like, okay, yeah. Daryl, but there's a lot of pieces missing. But I think, you know, and, yeah, and you think of France, I don't know, a lot, most people think of France, they think romantic and they think, you know, this kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah. When you're looking at this, you know, it's, it's, there's danger, there's destruction. And then, but there still is a beauty and a romantic, somehow a romantic side to that. And I don't know, that's just... You know, psychological, I'm sure, because that's what we kind of Paris, oh, you know, (laughs) whatever. But even though as out of place as he should look, he just fit. I don't, (laughs) you know, and I read the article. Well, I'm sure everybody read the article that, you know, Norman Rita said they're creating a work of art. And that's that's what I thought Mm -hmm. of, you know, and like he's 100% accurate on that. Yeah, it's very that the landscape is just incredible. It's, you know, it's, it's just hard to describe how it just does fit. And it was just perfect. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting that you said was he didn't have any of, you know, his motorcycle or his crossbow or any of that, but he had his swagger. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Daryl, he's still walking the same. It's still him. That, Sideways kind of walk. Yeah, he's right? probably a little limp leaning. with it this time, but he was still yes. there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so I thought, uh, and then, you know, his vest, mm-hmm. the wings on yep. his back. I just thought, this is in his hair. Yeah. His hair is still the same. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much time has passed, but his yeah. hair is still the same. <laughs> so, uh, yes, the landscape was just gorgeous. I did notice at in the beginning, how there weren't many walkers. And I found that interesting. I thought we don't see them roaming like we do on the roads Mm -hmm. in the woods or wherever else, you know, we have seen them. So I found that interesting at first, the things that he was walking by. And of course, then we see castles and the weapons that they have. And so it's just so intriguing to me. And it's just something we all get to experience that don't live there. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are a lot of uh, fans there that live there that like, oh, okay, cool. You're finally coming to our <laughs> neck of the woods. But for us that don't live there or any of the fans that don't live there, we get to get a new experience mm-hmm. with this. So I just think it's it's just really cool. And then, of course, he has to meet up with these people that, and I heard that was another critique. Well, it's so funny that he just happens to talk to people that can speak English, yeah. but come on, <laughs> not everybody. Mm-hmm. Some people, they, they did have some translation mm-hmm. and they, they're still very, they're not Americans yeah. I, that were speaking. They, they were still, the accents are very thick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, for me, it works. Yeah. I, uh, you know, sorry, people, come on. <laughs> yeah, There has, oh, I know someone was saying, you know, how realistic or unrealistic mm-hmm. it was. I said, okay, this is a apocalyptic world <laughs> set with zombies. Okay. <laughs> You're already on that limb. Yeah. So just keep, just keep going. Right. It's just <laughs> add it on. It's a TV show so, people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but it also gave me vibes of movies. Mm-hmm. One, a movie it gave me a vibe of a movie and also other movies. I thought of Mad Max. Mm-hmm. I thought of um, Angels and Demons. Mm-hmm. These different movies kept popping in. Yeah. I thought, wow, I'm really getting a feel for, you know, these other movies watching this, which I thought was really cool. And I loved it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what was a highlight or something that stood out to you in this episode? So a highlight was I loved when L- Laurent was mimicking Daryl. 
because I thought here's this little boy who besides what Pierre Jean or whatever his name was, he's really not been around a lot of men, you know, he hasn't had father, yeah. and, you know, and Isabel says that at one point, but I just thought how sweet it was. He did, you know, drink the water, pushed his hair back, stretched Did You yeah. know, he just did everything Daryl did because it's like, Oh, this is what men do, you know? And I just thought it was a sweet yeah. thing that they added to it. Um, you know, just to show that, because then next we're going to see how intelligent this little boy is, but just to remind you that he is a child, you know? And so I just thought that was really neat. And then, you know, I loved how he was so in tune to Daryl and he sensed his sadness and he says that he feels it in his gut, you know, kind of thing. And when, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say next don't you? When he said the line that Judith said, I was like, Oh, my heart. <laughs> I mean, because we just heard her say at the beginning of the episode, and then he says it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. <laughs> so I thought that was, yep. <laughs> second time, Renee. Second time you've you've given me chills. <laughs> and so yeah, so I thought that was, um, you know, I, and I also you could sense Daryl's. He was uncomfortable that this kid had read him so clearly. You know, he knew, you know, and I'm sure hearing those words that Judith had said to him when she said goodbye was probably just crushing his heart because he just wants to go home. <laughs> I mean, he says it multiple times. So, you know, I love that. And I also, the dynamic between Isabel and Daryl is so fun because she's a nun and he's, an, I think, an atheist or, you know, but they are so similar. <laughs> So yeah. it's fun to see that because, you know, it's, it's like they're showing these two what you think are opposite people, but they're they're really not, you know. So just a lot of fun. I mean, there's much more than that. But that was two, you know, that was two things that really stuck out to me. Yeah. So I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I agree with you because that is what stuck out to me, too. That, those were mm. the important parts or. What I really appreciated about it was uh, Daryl bonding with these new people, mm -hmm. uh, with her and with Laurent. And it's interesting. I, I just love the casting. I think mm -hmm. the casting is so incredible okay. because just because you introduce people doesn't mean that it's going to work, mm -hmm. right? And so, but they do make it work. And that's just a, a testament to... Norman Reedus and his acting and also these other two mm -hmm. actors, both uh, one's a child and one's an <laughs> adult, but it, it's just crazy because it really works and it's so evident. And when in episode one, you already feel this connection between all three of them. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Plus I, again, we're going to get into it because I think you wanted to say what I want to say and it's the whole faith um, and <laughs> hope and, and all of that, that we're going to get to in a minute. But um, I just that whole connection with all of them was just very cool. When she comes in to talk with him and he's bathing and they talk about the scars and, and I, I felt like uh, just talking about faith and their shared experiences. I just, I loved being there as they experience this mm -hmm. connection. But, okay, I have to bring this up. Where was she going to wash with that sponge? Yeah. Because I, I was like, you're a nun, I, honey. I don't know that you're supposed to be in here. <laughs> I'm like, and he stopped her only because he was looking at her scars. I'm thinking, where was her hand going? What was she doing? Yeah, that was, yeah, a little risque there at the Abbey. <laughs> but it's funny because I'm like what I know that? I think she was just wetting the sponge is all she was doing right <laughs> <laughs> let's go with that Renee um but uh, but yeah so I mean they kind of share mm -hmm. a little bit of of background or or you know they have yeah. been divulged oh well, he did mm -hmm. he divulged to her yeah you know, about his father, but uh, we're not exactly sure where her scars yeah. came from just yet, mm -hmm. which, you know, is that little bit of mystery that we'll be curious later on to find out. And so I just feel like all of it is so intriguing, like mm -hmm. really intriguing. It just really grips me. And I just, 
Love all of that. And like you had mentioned, uh, Laurent, just mimicking everything that Daryl did, I think was just very, very cool. And just the Rubik's Cube thing yeah. and 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 also the conversation that they had and and the drawing that she, the nun mm -hmm. showed, or Isabel showed, yeah. uh, Daryl was crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, what? And when that whole element starts to peek in at us, that is what I'm like. Yeah. That's why it reminded me of, of a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that, let's go into the themes because we're already touching upon them now. <laughs> so, I mean, I know that there was survival and mm -hmm. the faith and the, the desire for home. Did you see that or any others that stood out to you? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I loved the faith element because lots of people that resonates with a lot of people, you know, they have some sort of something or whatever that they have faith in or they, you know, that sort of thing. So I loved how they added that to this. And, and we've seen it in The Walking Dead, but, you know, with Father Gabriel and some other, you know, other people. Yeah. But this yeah. was like their whole thing. You know, these these nuns wholeheartedly believe they believe Daryl was sent to them. They le believe Laurent yeah. has a destiny to fulfill. They believe, you yeah. know, and this, you know, the monk that came and talked to Laurent, you know, or they saw the prophecy or, you know, whatever. I forget exactly. They yeah. answered to the prophecies kind of thing. You know, there's just so many things. And then the fact that they embrace everyone's, you know, because you know, this is the end of the world, people. We just have to start getting along and just, you know, yeah. let's let's just do this together yeah. kind of thing. And so I really like that, um, the way they portrayed that. And, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, you know, because there's just a lot of open-ended things with that. But I, that's the point, you know, well, the story will be told and then we'll know. But yeah, and then, yeah. and I mentioned before about just Daryl's survival skills, you know, it was, you know, just, I guess that was, you know, even though this is so different and so everything that familiar piece to keep us tied to the walking dead, right. While Daryl mm -hmm. go into action, he started searching for whatever he needed to survive to, you know, do, you know, fulfill his plan and whatever next steps came, you know, came his way. He was getting weapons and water and, you know, all the things he needed. So, um, yeah, so those, yeah, the faith and survival were the two that really stood out to me. With survival, yeah, we saw him, his resourcefulness, like you said, and also, which made me think we hadn't talked about that walker. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> yes, burner. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, I thought, I mean, we know Daryl's going to be okay, but at the same time, I thought to myself, that could that could spread, couldn't it? Because that's almost like getting bit, isn't mm -hmm. it? I don't know. Or is it just something that oozed out and burned up? I don't know. It made mm -hmm. me wonder, but then they cauterized yeah. it so that it wouldn't spread. So that was good, but that's very, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. Very scary. You know, something that is revealed to him and he has to, because he's used to dealing with, walkers in a certain way and now he has to make sure they don't because sometimes you could use that mm -hmm. right you could use if something grabbed you where you could pull and push mm -hmm. or whatever it might be but now you have to be know that that can burn you or hurt mm -hmm. you or whatever it might be so wow or yeah. splatter on you if you yeah. kill it so. right yeah because when it splat when the when the blood or whatever it is uh, hit the ground it, it even you know like it was yeah. sitting on the ground. Burn the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what else we learn about that. <laughs> yeah. And also the nuns kicking butt because <laughs> I wanted to bring that up because there are these nuns and we have our uh, idea of what that entails, what that is, just <laughs> like her coming in with Daryl and all of that. And then the other nuns kicking butt and, mm -hmm. you know, having these weapons and killing. Yeah. But yeah. really they're defending themselves, yeah. but still <laughs> it's a different side, but Hey, we're an apocalyptic world. People do all kinds of things. We see father Gabriel do all kinds yeah. of things in the walking dead. In fact, side note, I think I told you we're rewatching the walking dead. We're in season six toward the end. And, that is when uh, Father Gabriel starts to shift his his mindset mm -hmm. of of how he was, and that's when they are, are first uh, finding out about Negan. They haven't met him yet, mm -hmm. but anyway. So just seeing uh, Father Gabriel in that and how he, 
reacted and how he had to change. And so did these nuns Mm -hmm, Yeah, have to change how they react. But what I love too, is that whole faith. And uh, I also love that there is, I don't even know how to explain what it is that I feel or sense through this, but the fact that this young Laurent has these abilities that you cannot explain. Mm -hmm. I just Mm -hmm. am fascinated with that. And I love that it is in this series because the fact that he can feel things, that he can sense the sadness in his eyes and he feels it in his stomach. Mm -hmm. And he actually says that I feel things in my Mm -hmm. stomach and Oh, what this poor kid, he's going to get an ulcer or I don't know what. (laughs) So I just, yeah, I just love the theme of all of that. Mm -hmm. I just think it is so cool. And also with Daryl's longing for home and the fact that he dreams, he has these dreams Mm -hmm. about Carol and Judith. And those are the two people that come to mind for him. Someone, you know, his best friend and also, you know, someone he cared for Mm -hmm. like a daughter, right? I mean, he's known her since she was born. (laughs) I was, I was surprised he didn't say when, when uh, he asked him, Oh, do you have a family or any kids? He, and he said, no, not like that or something. And I thought, yeah, he could have said, yeah, I do. (laughs) Right. Cause he regarded yeah. Judith is his, mm-hmm. is his daughter. Mm-hmm. And I mean, cause he doesn't, well, he now knows that Rick, yeah. you know, is possibly alive, mm-hmm. but at the, before then he didn't, and he was a father figure. Okay. So I brought up Carol. So let's talk about Carol for one second as to if you could have seen Carol in this, or did you miss seeing Carol in this? Because we are going to see Carol in season two, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thought. That's what they're telling yeah. everybody. So, yeah. I, so initially, this whole series was actually supposed to be the two of them going off on like a scavenging, or I don't know exactly what their purpose was, and then they would come back and visit. So, like that was the initial um, setup for this series. So they would have broke uh. off from the main series, had their own series, but it, it would be where they came back and forth. You know, they go off to New Mexico and they come back, and this kind of thing. And then somewhere along the line, they decided to go to France. And then, you know, she was unable to um, join at that time. And, you know, so, you know, I think about like the way this, you know, I don't know how far into the story they got because I can't see where she fits right now. Right. I mean, it always fits in Daryl's story because they're just connected. But like, I'm like, so they must, you know, I don't know how they would. I think they shifted, right? I do. They must have shifted. Maybe some of the nun story and Laurent and those things were the same, but they had to do Daryl, you know, like, I don't think the both of them could have easily gotten onto this, ra- you know, this boat and all that, you know, that, so some of that had to be altered. I, w- I, I would suspect, I mean, she, they could have done it maybe some other way and then they meet the nuns and then, then I could totally see her coming alongside him because yeah. she takes care of everyone too. How many children has she adopted, you know, over the years? So I can see her fitting into that part, but like the getting there part. Yeah. I feel like that would have been changed up. So I haven't really missed her so far just because of I, it's kind of a singular story kind of thing at the right. moment, you know, but yeah. I, I guess we'll know at the end what happens and, you know, how, you know, eventually we'll learn how she gets her why and everything. But yeah. Um, I guess, yeah. So, so far I just, ha- I haven't missed her in it so far just because of the way it's set up right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I, and I, I see that too. And I think that they shifted Mm -hmm. knowing that she wasn't going to be uh, involved in this season. And I was worried because there are two, two and two, right? Because we saw Negan and Maggie (laughs) and dead city. And we know we're going to see Rick and Michonne in that one. So it made sense, Daryl and Carol, but then all of a sudden, well, wait, it's just Daryl, but (laughs) Daryl's doing a, a kick-ass yeah. job just being Daryl. So it works. Well, it really does work so far for yeah, me. I said, yeah, I said that one of my articles, I was just like, you know, he finally has the limelight on him. He doesn't have all these other yeah. people to overshadow him and he can yeah. focus. And I mean, I, I really, you know, I just think he's doing a very good job at it. You know, it's just one of those things where I just, I think like he's finally like came into his own kind of thing where he's, yeah. you know, leading his own series and doing a very good job. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the big bad wolf who is <laughs> this powerful, 
you know, antagonist named Janae. Mm -hmm. Is it Madame Janae? I, yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> she, yeah, she's introduced uh, seeking retribution against Daryl. And also, is it Cadrone? Is it Cadrone that I, I'm not I sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So thick, like he had a little clip, you yeah. know, the character like kind of uh, intro kind of thing. And I wasn't quite uh -huh. sure, but I, that, yeah. yeah, I think that's good for our purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Cadrone, yeah. the guy with the tattoo yeah. on his face who works for the cause. I guess this yeah. is that's Janae Earth. is the cause. Yeah, the, it's, yeah. A, it's a political movement called the cause. So let me share with you what I thought. I thought Janae reminded me of Elizabeth Kublik from World Beyond. She had that, her Everything. hair, the look, the accent. I mean, different accent, but yeah. still the way she was dressed, kind her, of. Her uh, carriage, just the way she stood. <laughs> yeah. Like military yep. uh, vibe. So it made me think. they, And then they both seem to be working on walkers and people yeah. and research. So it's like, mm, are you guys you know, yeah. radioing each other and working <laughs> on it here and there, uh, something feels connected. Or have to they me. been trained to do this? Exactly. You know, they have been yeah. in the box and they've been trained. This is what you're doing. You're in the United States. You're in France. Here's your job. It's the yeah. same job. We're just, you know, I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. And when I read that you wrote that you, you had that in the notes, I was like, that is crazy because that's ex when she came up because really all we saw was like a little clip of her and one of the teasers or whatever. She just kind of didn't say much or whatever. So you didn't get a real feel for her. But in that scene, well, I, that's 100% what I thought was, was yeah, yeah, she's Kublik. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah. I thought she was, I thought she was fabulous. I thought she did such a good job, you know, and you can tell she's, you know, she's one of those women who she gets things done. That's why she's in her position. And, yeah. you know, she, she doesn't waste time. You know, she just kind of does what does, which I wonder, you know, I, that had me thinking like, you know, I feel like she kind of acts before thinking. So it could, that could end up being a downfall maybe, and maybe not me. That's just my first impression, but it just seems like she's very quick, you know? Yeah. And then these test subjects. So you're like, okay, wait a minute. So this boat came, I, I didn't quite understand. So they said it took three years to get this boat going, but it came from the United States. So I'm at that. I like, did they go, they must've fixed it in France, sent it to the States and then came back, I guess. Um, it was a little confusing there because, so then are these CRM test subjects or are these ones that the Fran French have been working on? <laughs> that was yeah. my other thought because yeah. if they were in the United States and of course we kind of get a feel that the bad people Daryl encountered were probably CRM because he got too close to finding Rick or something. <laughs> so yeah. it's like all this stuff going on. And then it could literally have nothing to do with any of that, I suppose. <laughs> so, <Totally. laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was my initial thoughts, but I thought she was really good. I thought she, you know, she nailed the role for sure. I mean, she definitely seemed like someone you don't want to come up against. <laughs> Well, I thought, and it still could be, she was going to off that captain because <laughs> she had, then she puts her hand on his shoulder. I and thought that was a signal. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm like, ooh, the, bye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, little boy. Yeah. That little cat. Yeah. So I, I, I absolutely thought, well, that was her signal to whoever was standing there, but they all walked off with yeah. her. So he might be okay for yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe because he I, I don't know I guess someone else could identify Daryl also but now everybody's after Daryl yeah yeah because now they're after Daryl they're like you ruined our three years of research and then <laughs> our boat and that, everything and now yeah yeah and then to drone or yeah he wants his brother is dead you know his yeah. brother's dead so even though it wasn't you know, Daryl that actually uh it was um what was her name um, um I can't remember what her name was the uh, that said noob. <laughs> yes, the the other gal with her grandpa. Yeah. I know I wrote it somewhere. I can't remember right now. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so uh, that uh, granddaughter and grandfather, I'm sure we'll see her again. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because Daryl trusted them because she did help him at first, but then they're like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We, we need these medical supplies or whatever they are. So mm -hmm. they didn't want him to take them. 
So then they knocked him over the head. They didn't kill him. <laughs> so I don't feel like they're entirely bad people. They yeah. just were trying to survive. But I don't know. We're going to find out more about well, them. Well, they keep coming so. up against people like, you know, the, how, I don't know, his guy, his, I don't know how you say his soldiers. I forget the French word. Oh, Guerre. Gu- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, Gears, yeah, you yeah. know, if that's, I don't know. I, obviously, she's come in contact with she's them. So <laughs> I know I, I took French my in high French school, class. I, said, yeah, I know <laughs> high school. <laughs> Need a refresher. Guerriers. Yeah, Guerriers. I think that sounds. That's yeah. I think that sounds right. But they, you know, if she's come against them. So you know, it seemed like they knew them. You know that they have encountered them before. They didn't just right. Whatever, come upon them and not be surprised that they're in this, you know, area or anything. So. Um, but yeah, I wonder if we'll see her again or not. I know. I think we will. We totally will. Yeah. I think we will for sure. Do you have any other thoughts or tidbits or predictions or anything else you want to share about the episode? Um, I jokingly said uh, that, you know, Daryl is at least clean in France. The salt water gave him a nice exfoliation. His hair is not as greasy and stuff. So that was kind of nice to see his hair actually move and not just be plastered mm-hmm. to his head. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. But I one thing that I think is phenomenal in this is the score that it's yeah, just yeah. like it just gives it that old world feel and again i go back to that if this is like kind of an oxymoron but they're like a romantic apocalyptic something or other i don't know but it just yeah it's and it does it's you don't even notice it until you need to notice it and then it's just yeah yeah, it's it's incredible so i i think they've just done a fabulous job with that yeah they did i noticed it too i wrote that in my notes (laughs) the music is cool yeah uh I also about Daryl, the thing, the little tiny notes are about Daryl. Uh, one is he was cleaned up after the bath <laughs> and his hair did. I noticed his hair looked good. I loved the blue sweater and the suspenders yes. on him. <laughs> like I loved it. Like it looked good. Yeah. Like, he looked, I'm like, Daryl, you're looking good, right? <laughs> he looks great in France. Yeah. <laughs> yes. France suits you. Yeah. Uh, also, his humor. He yeah. has this very subtle humor, but you saw it come through, I, at least for me. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, my gosh, he's funny. Yeah. He's funny. He still has this humor about him. And we talked about the nuns kicking butt. So oh, yeah, I just that was so that cool. That was, yeah. I had one. Yeah. Other, yeah. No, go ahead. But yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. One other thing about Laurent, you know, just like his uh, his intelligence and stuff, it's just that part is just so fascinating. But this whole Messiah thing. So like, you know, Messiah can be a leader of people. You know, he can just, you know, it doesn't have to be. But then you also have that, you know, like Jesus, the Messiah kind of thing where he healed yeah. the sick and things, you know. So there's like, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and what that exactly meant when she said that. Because he'll be the new Messiah. Well, what does that mean, you know, to you guys? Because they have this, I mean, they believe it, you know. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, who knows what will happen with it, but they absolutely believe it. So it's very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I know. I, I-, <laughs> <laughs> I love it because it just reminds, it just gives you like this hope. Mm-hmm. Because in this world, what else can you have mm-hmm. but to have this hope? Mm-hmm. And so, and they have this faith all of the nuns mm-hmm. and in this kid. And I, I don't know. I just think it's a, it's a good direction. I just think it's, it's what the, you know, Daryl Dixon needed, yeah. uh, you know, this series needed. So and I'm it, really happy about that. And Isabel said that to him. She said, you know, you help us with this and you know, we're wrong. Then you're not really out anything, but if you, you know, you help us and we're right. She's like, you know, put a little, yeah. you know, why not bet on hope is what she says, yeah. to him, you know, and that is so true yeah. because it's something probably Daryl really has never thought about, you know, because <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, a different, um, you know, different outlook on <laughs> this, you know, the world falling apart kind of thing. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So I would love to know, cause we are at our segment and the award goes to, so I would love to know what was your favorite Quote, character, or moment? I put down the comment he made when Isabel shows the drawing. <laughs> and she's trying to be serious about this. Like, look what he, look what this kid drew. You know, like, like it's a foretelling of him coming, you know, Daryl arriving. And he's like, 
he should stick to math. And I just, <laughs> and that was hilarious because, you know, it was like every proud mom, look at what a kid did. And then it's like, yeah, what the heck? And so I just, and that goes to back to what you said about his humor, you know, yes, it was like, yes. he just, you know, doesn't even, I don't think he even smirks. He's like serious about it, but it was hilarious. So I just thought that was <laughs> just a great light little thing that happened, you know? <laughs> And I love that you brought that up because I couldn't think of his humor quick enough. There was like three different things that popped out when he said um, Mm them. One, when he was talking to Laurent, too, with the Rubik's Cube, he brought up something that was funny. And it's just the... I did want to bring up Daryl again because you Mm -hmm. talked about it, how what a great actor he is and how finally he gets to shine Mm -hmm. in this vehicle of uh, the Daryl Dixon show. And... I was reminded of what a great actor he mm-hmm. is. He is so great. We're just so used to his mm-hmm. character that you forget. But when you can put these subtleties in your performance, I think that's what shines. Also, physically, he was fighting when he was fighting with some of these uh, walkers and even the uh, the people and the soldiers and when he was chasing I mean I noticed all of that Mm -hmm. and I thought he's so good he's Mm -hmm. so good I love Norman (laughs) Reedus and I'm going to tell you my favorite moment and then we're going to talk a little bit about ride because I love Norman Reedus and that too (laughs) but okay but here my favorite part was the conversation between him Daryl and Laurent because just something moved me. It just really, I, I let out a, a, a audible noise when I uh, heard him say it. he feels it in his stomach and he feels his sadness. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> one that the kid could feel that mm-hmm. and sense it. And it was a hundred percent accurate because we know the kid doesn't know. We know that Daryl wants to get back. The fact that he left that tape recording saying, I want the people back home to know Mm -hmm. that I tried, I'm trying, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. So we all know, but Laurent doesn't know, Mm -hmm. but Laurent does know know. because he has this ability. (laughs) And also because um, just Daryl feeling bad for him, you know, just when he got burnt, I felt bad for him when he gets knocked out and, <laughs> and then just feeling this loneliness and, and longing to go back home. And so, um, yeah, just all of that. I just, uh, that was, yeah, my favorite, favorite moment for me. And I just have to, oh, to interject this because you said that then it, you know, your friends, you and I both love friends. And so I was like, they don't know yeah. that we know that we know. <laughs> yeah. So true. Sorry, I just had to interject that. <laughs> yes, yes, that's so true. So true. All right. Well, friends out there, we would love to know what your favorite moment is too. So please share it with us in the comments uh, or anywhere on social media. Again, you can get to us at screensoffocus.com. Okay, and please be sure to come back mm-hmm. each week to because uh, Renee and I are going to be here breaking it down <laughs> and uh, for you as each episode comes out. But we're going to shift into our TV and movie recommendations. And because we are talking about Norman Reedus and because Ride with Norman Reedus came on right after Daryl Dixon show. And I was so excited, Renee, because you had said, okay, Keanu Reeves is going to be in (laughs) one of these. And I had my fingers crossed because I didn't know. I didn't look ahead. I had no idea. I was like, is it going to be, is it going to be Keanu? Is it going to be Keanu? And it was Keanu Reeves riding with Daryl Dixon. So what'd you think of that episode? I just, okay. Keanu, I've, been a fan of Keanu Reeves forever. Like I didn't know about Norman Reedus till later in life, but actually I didn't really know much about, I mean, like I watched things, but I didn't know who Norman Reedus was till The Walking Dead. Like I'd seen things, but just wasn't, I don't know. No. Right. But Keanu Reeves, I remember being very young and watching the River's Edge movie with him, you know, and I remember, you know, so I've watched all these movies all these years. And so, and I knew he loved motorcycles. And so I was like, dang it, they just need to do this. And finally the stars aligned or whatever. And <laughs> it happened. And I remember watching Norris on, I think it was Jimmy Fallon. And he just casually mentions it, barely even, oh yeah, I'm filming in Utah, Keanu Reeves. And then he just went on about the rest. And I was like, 
what did he just say? And so I remember writing an article and the Keanu Reeves fans went nuts on Twitter because they hadn't heard it either. So it was so exciting and we were all so excited. So anyway, I was very much looking forward to this. And the fact that they were going to Utah, because then I Googled that. I was like, what are they doing? You know, I didn't realize all the wonderful, like motorcycle, like, yeah, I I didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. When you you can go, I included this website in one of my um, ride episodes or ride articles there, you can like, there's ratings and they have all the map of Utah where you can put these different layers on to see the best, the most scenic, the, oh, this and that of the the bike ride, you know? So Mm -hmm. anyway, but I thought it was really good. I love, I, you know, I think I I told someone, I said, we could just do the ride with Norman and Keanu series from now on, as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) And I think just the two of them together are, they're just very fascinating together. I, I commented that they could be siblings. I, they're just very yeah. similar and they're yeah. and just, yeah, just the way they are. I loved uh, the, the coffee on the salt flats. I thought that was fabulous. I, yes. <laughs> Norman's brewing coffee and he just pulls out all his equipment. <laughs> It's like, I want to have coffee with Norman and Keanu on the salt flats. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but overall, yeah, I've never been to, I've never been to Utah. Now I really want to go because it just looks beautiful. Right. Um, it and, does look beautiful. And my favorite part was when they're talking about hockey and Norman says, have you ever watched Young Blood? <laughs> or wait, is it Young? Yeah. And Keanu's like, I was in that movie. <laughs> and I just, he didn't realize <laughs> I just told somebody else that part too, because that's what it, it was, that was so funny. Oh, was like, you're in that? Yeah, that was me. And then they showed the clip yes. of how young he was. Yeah, and, and then they went and... into him working with uh, with Patrick Swayze oh. and, you know, because they did Point Break together also. And Yes, and the <gasps> skydiving and all that. And yes, Patrick Swayze, that was the other highlight that I was telling my friends too. I'm like, they talked about Patrick Swayze yeah. and how great he was. And oh yeah. my goodness. They were just, oh man, all the, ah, ah, yeah, I just love all of that. Yeah, it was just so good. And the the dog, the dogs that they went to visit, and the, the, you know, and I mean, yeah, it just was such a neat, yeah, I loved it. (laughs) I loved it too. And for anyone that doesn't watch Ride with Norman Reedus, check it out because. You don't have to ride a motorcycle or anything like that. What you're getting is this experience of going to a a place that you haven't been, or maybe you have, but and also learning about Norman Reedus and whoever the celebrity Mm -hmm. is. And also they always seem to introduce some sort of nonprofit or, or small community, Mm -hmm. uh, either, you know, like the dogs in this case, but Mm -hmm. sometimes it's something else or it's a restaurant or it's a bike or it's Mm -hmm. somebody who's restoring part of the city or a house or whatever it is. So I love that the producers are putting this together. But also, I think that Norman Reedus, it just was revealed to me again on this Sunday. One, he was so good in the Daryl Dixon show, but that he's so good in Norman Reedus. When he does his narration, it sucks you in. It is so perfect. It, it, he he says the most perfect thing. And even if somebody else wrote that, he delivers it. And it just works. It works. It works. It works. And so I'm I'm I know Josh Holloway will be in uh, another one mm-hmm. and uh, Johnny Knoxville. And, and then what's her name? A- a- Ali a- Adri Law. I have a it's A-D-R-I a D R I Law. Yeah. A- an artist. Yeah. yeah. I don't I've never. I yeah. Know, I had to Google. Yeah. I was just yeah. trying to look. There is a, I'll have to send it or give it to you to post, but there is um, an his, a historical thing that, Nor- that Norman Reedus narrated several years ago. And now I can't remember who the topic was, but it was so fascinating to listen to it, you know, in his voice, you know, he, yeah. he, narr- he, he yeah. like reads our, this whole thing. And that's uh-huh. what, another thing. If you like that, I don't know if you've read his book, but he does. The- oh, okay. His book, get the audio version. He <gasps> narrates the book. <laughs> the ravage. So yeah, he did the narration on the book. So I, you know, that's because his voice, he does, he just has this calming voice, you know, when he, yeah. it's his real yeah. voice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So if you like his voice, get the audio book. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I know what's going on my list. Okay. So if you can't tell, we are big fans of Ride with Norman Reedus <laughs> television series. So check that out. AMC. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so what else? Are you watching anything else? So we wa- we we always uh, I'm a huge Halloween fan. So beginning of September, we start watching all the horror movies, even repeats and everything else. One of the first ones we watched this year was Body Bags. Have you ever heard of this? It's from 1994-ish, maybe. So it puts you in mind of like Tales of the Crypt or Creep Show, where it's these little stories kind of thing. There's four stories in this. And it's, you know, it's campy. It's cheesy. It's, you know, it's, you know, just like Creep Show and Crypt, the Tales of Crypt. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. Your mm-hmm. uh, Crypt Keeper-esque character is actually uh, John Carpenter from, oh, you know, all the horror okay. movies, um, Halloween and everything. He is actually your kind of Crypt Keeper character who introduces what's coming next, that kind of thing. And he works in a morgue. <laughs> and it's hilarious. And then throughout the whole thing, all of these famous directors, horror directors show up. They're like little bit characters and they don't have like main parts, but it's uh, hilarious. Greg Nicotero even walks a dog like out in the <laughs> one of the scenes. And so if you like those campy, you know, this, you know, we're not talking, you know, award winning anything, but it's, it's, if you like that kind of campy stuff, you know, like that, it's, it, it was fun to watch. It was a fun watch. So that was one of the first ones. And then we went ahead and watched the new children of the corn. Cause I had heard about that and I heard very bad things about it. I liked it. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's different than the first, but I, that to me was fine. I don't, I don't know why everyone wants everything to follow exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we, yeah. you know, and I mean, how many children of the corn movies are there? None of them. I don't know <laughs> what follow what, you know? So yeah, but I liked it. I thought it was good. It's just more of a modern take on it. And, um, I, I thought they did a good job, you know, for a slashery, you know, kind of movie. And I think people just need to remember what a slasher movie is and they, <laughs> they're not, yeah. serious. they're not. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Those, yeah, those two. And then, um, we started watching the good place. We had never watched, we've never watched that. Have you watched it before? I've only seen a couple yeah, of so, episodes. It's not something I've watched. Yeah, no. we're like in, I think, season two now. And I, yeah, we're really enjoying that. And then I start watching, I've almost done with Outlander. And ah, yeah. I'm, I'm at I season it. seven. I haven't started the new season yet. Oh, I, I only have what is on Netflix. <laughs> if, so, yeah, I think there are two seasons. Two seasons out. So, I, yeah. I, so there's season yeah. six is on Stars, I believe. And I did watch that. Oh, and then, and then I haven't started seven yet. So I, cause there's like, you only get the half first half of seven and I don't know when the second part comes out. So anyway, I'm, I thought, okay, I'm going to keep, I'm, I'm going to save this, the season seven episodes for just a little bit. So I started watching the tutors, but I don't know if I, I'm in a season two and I'm still indifferent. To it. I mean, it's, it's not ah. bad, but it's just, I don't know. So I'm still trying to figure that one out, but mm. I'm watching it through. <laughs> yeah. So what about you? I have, I haven't seen that either. I I have watched so much, but I think in the last week, <laughs> I will say that I Virgin River came out uh-huh. season five on Netflix and I binged the first six episodes and then a few more. There was 10 episodes mm-hmm. altogether. And I finished it Monday, that Monday night mm-hmm. after it premiered. And then it said that there was going to be um some christmas episodes At released november yeah in november the 30th yeah there are gonna be two of them made me so happy because <laughs> i thought oh i have to wait another whatever two <laughs> years until it comes out again but i'm really good but what i really like about it for anyone who doesn't watch it yes it can be kind of soap opera evening <clears throat> soap opera i guess uh, i suppose but i enjoy it mm-hmm. i like it i like the characters you know, people are, you know, it's a small town. The setting is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I think it's Canada. I mean, it's not supposed to be in Canada. Yeah, it's filmed in Canada, but it's in Northern California. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I loved it. It was a great, sometimes you just feel like watching that type of a show. And that is what I felt like. And that <laughs> what I've been able to watch. Because I had been watching so much uh drama or crime or <laughs> all those other shows. So this was just a really good series to watch for me. I also watched uh, Tough Love with Hil- Hillary Farr. I didn't realize it was a second season. It's a, one of the HGTV oh, shows yeah. where they redo your <laughs> your room, your house, whatever it is. And Hillary Farr is on Love It or List It. I don't know if you've seen yeah, that or anyone else has seen that. Well, she's Hillary. So she has a, a show called uh, Tough Love. 
And I saw an advertisement for it. I said, oh, I want to watch it. So I was able to watch it on Max, okay. so which was formerly HBO. So it said se second season, but I hadn't even seen the first season. <laughs> so I started on season one. And what I also love about this is if you're, sometimes I've watched a show and I'm at the tail end and I, I'm not quite ready to start another show that's heavy or big. And these you can just watch, <laughs> you know, insert them wherever you need to just to fill the time until you're off going to do whatever it is you're going to do. So I'm really enjoying it. Of course, it makes me want to redo something in my house <laughs> or think about it. Uh, but the movie that I recently saw was I finally, finally got to see Oppenheimer. Oh. <laughs> I, I know I was a little bit late in watching it, but I mm -hmm. absolutely loved it. I loved every performance in it. I thought it was just, the performances were so amazing. The story, mm -hmm. I didn't know very much about it. And so uh, I learned a lot mm -hmm. and visually it's beautiful. And I just think Christopher Nolan is just such a great director. It just, all the acting was so good. And Robert Downey Jr. was just like <laughs> incredible and Killian Murphy yeah. was, oh, so Killian Murphy made me go start watching P Peaky Blinders because oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. <laughs> I haven't watched it. So I, I'm mm -hmm. on season one, the end of season one. So I'm watching that also. Mm -hmm. So those <laughs> are my recommendations. Yeah, we haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. And then next week, my husband has gone all week. So I get to watch the Barbie movie with my daughter. She's been begging me. Like she goes, when it comes out, will you please watch it? And I said, dad's gone the whole week. So I get to watch the Barbie movie. So we'll see. <laughs> hey, is it coming out to streaming? It, yeah, it was or? To, today, I believe. I think it, it was oh. like you have to, I mean, like it's uh, pay. pay, pay yeah. You have to pay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on okay. demand. There we go. I couldn't think of it. Yeah. So you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Um, rent it or buy it or whatever. So yeah. So she's like, I will buy it, mom, because I'm going to, you know, watch and watch it. So yes. Yeah. So next yeah. week on, on one of our five girls nights that we're going to have, then we're going to have So she, she really wanted to see it because she loved it so much. So Wait, you haven't seen it at all? No. Oh my <laughs> gosh. You're going to have so much fun. Yeah. So. And then, and then you'll have to go watch Oppenheimer. Yes. I know. I say that for my husband. I, I, and we've just been kind of busy and things lately. We just have, we, we usually go to the movies a lot and we've just been doing other things right now and just have not gotten yeah. to the movies like we want to. So. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Performances are super good. I've and like I said, that. you learn some things that <laughs> I weren't aware of. Okay. <laughs> so you think it's going to be about the bomb and just the bomb. And it's not. Mm -hmm. It's about his... And it's not in chronological order okay. either how it's presented to you. But you see before, during, and after, and how his life is affected by it and his just the people that he works with and about these hearings and about communism, which I didn't realize so much was mm -hmm. in it about that. So you learn a lot. You do yeah. learn a lot. So, I lo I love and I love, idea. yes, I was going to say, I love movies where I learned some history along with uh, learning about people mm -hmm. and done in such an artistic way of how this movie was uh, put out. And like I said, all the performance of Matt Damon, just everybody, Emily Blunt, mm -hmm. Florence Pugh. It's just, everybody is so good in it. So mm -hmm. really good job. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Renee, for joining me today. I, I'm so excited to have talked with you about the Daryl Dixon show. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, friends out there, thanks for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in and we hope something that we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity or inspiration. Please subscribe to our website at screensandfocus.com and tell a friend we would love more members of our TV club. You can find our website listed in our show notes. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.